Another day, another video from Medicosis Perfectionalis about hematology. In the previous videos, we have talked about hereditary angioedema and acquired angioedema. The patient is young, the patient is older. It's a hereditary autosomal dominant problem. It's an acquired autoantibodies problem. Now, let's get started. Hereditary angioedema is an autosomal dominant condition leading to a deficiency of C1 inhibitor, at least in type 1 hereditary angioedema, because type 2 is an abnormal function, not a decreased amount, leading to increased calicrin due to loss of inhibition, which will lead to increased bradykinin, leading to a, though all of these crazy stuff, such as bronchoconstriction, leading to a dry cough, increased vessel permeability, leading to angioedema. Increased pain due to inflammation leading to abdominal pain, which mimics colitis or pancreatitis. Natriuresis and vasodilation leading to hypotension. That's why bradykinin is pro-inflammatory. Cool. Clinically, we have episodic attacks of angioedema and pain. Trigger followed by prodrome followed by symptoms. Remember, no urticaria, no rash, no itching, no pitting edema. Diagnosis. C1 is normal. C2 is decreased, C1 inhibitor is decreased, that's the definition of the condition. Bradykinin is high, precalicrin is low, high molecular weight conversion is low. Why is precalicrin low? Because all of it has been converted into calicrin. Why is high molecular weight conversion low? Because all of it has been converted into bradykinin. Cool. Treatment. Do give C1 inhibitor infusion, do use Icataband. And there's another crazy drug called Ecalantide. Icataband is a bradykinin receptor blocker. Ecalantide is a calicrin inhibitor. Don't give steroids, antihistamine, or epinephrine. Why? Because this is not an allergy. This is an autosomal dominant bradykinin kind of problem. It's not a histamine kind of problem. Never ever give ACE inhibitors. Why? Because ACE inhibitors Increased bradykinin leads to angioedema and all of this crazy butt stuff. Don't add fuel to the fire. Some crazy mnemonics. Etiology of hereditary angioedema. We have type 1 when C1 inhibitor is none. Decreased amount. Type 2, the amount is normal, but C1 estrase inhibitor is too weak. Type 3, amount is normal. Function is normal. But factor 12, which Roman numeral has three digits, is abnormal. Hereditary angioedema, H, high molecular weight conversion is decreased, and there is hypotension, E, episodic attacks, they come in attacks, D, autosomal dominant, D, deficiency of C1 inhibitor, D, dental procedures can trigger the symptoms. Angioedema, A, ACE inhibitors are contraindicated, never ever, Oh, ouch, it hurts because bradykinin produces pain. D, dry cough, and A for airway obstruction. Treatment of hereditary angioedema. Hereditary angioedema does not respond to antihistamine, steroids, or epinephrine because it's not an allergic problem. It's not a histamine problem, it's a bradykinin problem. ACE inhibitors are contraindicated because they increase bradykinin, don't add fuel to the fire. During the acute attack, infuse the C1 INH, I can't band. Ecalantide, racemic epinephrine if you don't have any of these, fresh frozen plasma if you don't have any of these, don't use fresh frozen plasma in acute attacks that much, try to leave them for the prophylaxis. And if all of these are not available, of course you secure the airways first, you stupid idiot. Prevention of future attacks, also known as prophylaxis, use danazole, C1 inhibitor, and fresh frozen plasma because fresh frozen plasma will contain the missing C1 inhibitor. Don't miss my 50 hematology cases. Go to Patreon, guys. What are you waiting for? Patreon.com forward slash medicosis. These cases are just great. We're done with hereditary angioedema. Let's turn our attention to acquired angioedema. It's not a hereditary problem. It's an acquired problem. It's not a deficiency of C1 estrase. They are O2 antibodies against this poor C1 estrase inhibitor. It's not hereditary, so there is no family history. It's less common than hereditary angioedema. 
manifests later in life, the patient is older. Affects patients with monoclonal gammopathies, also known as paraproteinemia or myeloproliferative neoplasms, as well as malignancies such as lymphoma. Diagnosis, C1 function and C1 level are decreased. This is different from hereditary angioedema because in hereditary angioedema, C1 was normal. C2 and 4 are decreased. This is similar to hereditary angioedema because in both of them, C2 and C4 are decreased because they are consumed by the activation of the freaking classical complement pathway. C1 inhibitor is decreased. That's the definition of the whole thing. Treatment, treated the same as hereditary angioedema. Let's put them in a table and get out of here. Hereditary angioedema is an autosomal dominant condition. There is a family history. Acquired angioedema, not hereditary. Of course, no family history. Get your head out of your helmet. Hereditary angioedema deficiency of C1 inhibitor. Acquired O2 antibodies against C1 inhibitor. More common, less common. In hereditary, the patient is younger. It's called hereditary, come on. And it's usually an adolescent. Acquired, the patient is older and probably having paraproteinemia or lymphoma. Cool. Labs, C1 level and function, normal. C1 level and function, decreased. C2 and C4 are decreased in both of them. And C1 inhibitor is decreased in both of them. That's the definition of the whole thing. They have the same symptoms, plus acquired angioedema may have symptoms of paraproteinemia, such as multiple myeloma or MGUS or whatever, or symptoms of lymphoma. Treatment is the same, plus acquired angioedema will require treatment of the underlying condition being the paraproteinemia or the freaking lymphoma. Guys, it can never get easier than that. Thank you so much for watching. Please support Medicosis by going to patreon.com forward slash Medicosis. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.